Welcome back, everybody, to the Lazy General's playthrough of Slaughter Act 1. The Slaughter Act 1. It's episode 6. Uh, we just made our way down to the Members Only Club down here where this lovely and vaguely kind of shit band is performing. And this guy is fussing with his pockets. Oh, Sidney Emerson. Cedric Wolfwinnis. Cedric Wolfwinnis the third. Thank you. A new addition since we last met. Provides a certain regal air I feel was lacking before. How's life on the razor's edge? Surprisingly dull, as usual. Nonsense, you must be moving up in the world. I never thought I'd see the day where a dissident like you is granted membership of any club. Granted isn't quite the right word. Haha, <laughs> up to your old tricks, eh? Hmm, yes. I could say the same of you. Who did you have to swindle to get down here? Convincing punters that you're the Earl of Camden again. You're not far off. I've been painting a few pieces for the management. Hackneyed landscapes in the usual parochial tripe. Oh, parochial tripe. Ah, forgive me. That doesn't sound too bad at all. You haven't heard the best part. Go on. The booze is on the house. Oh. Damn, if only, I'd, if only I'd embraced the arts in my youth. So what brings you here? You've heard about the murder the other night. Alice Fairchild. The poor girl was here on the night she died. That's the one. I've been hired by a family member to unearth more about her killing. I suppose that's decent work. Yes, it is, Sid, and don't tell yourself any different. You're providing more than just solace. Yes, I suppose so. What's on your mind? Did you know Alice? I did indeed. She modeled for me, as have most of the, pr the Frith Street girls. So she worked at the Frith Street brothel? Yes, she truly had the most remarkable complexion. I suppose she will model for me no more. Were you close? I didn't see her outside of modeling in the members club. And it was only in the last few months that we met, but still. The Alice I knew was always honest, warm, and very funny. Do you know much about the murder? Only what the rags said. Throat slit in an alley, etc. You've heard it all, of course. Of course. So do you have any solid leads? Not really, to be honest, said. I trust you will soon. Cedric did it! Uh, did you see Alice on the night she died? I did, actually, though we didn't talk as she was working. Who was she with? A portly gent by the name of Jonathan Gibbs. He's in a booth at the moment, talking to another girl, Beatrice. I wouldn't think he's a suspect, though. I saw him skulking after more affordable girls, after Alice had left with someone else. Who did she leave with? I didn't see, but maybe our red-faced friend next door did. What are you working on at the moment? I'm attempting to render the band using oil paints. It's thirsty work. Ah, <laughs> no doubt. I can see that, taking full advantage of the job's perks, are we? Hell yeah, free pints. To be honest, I'd rather be painting the barmaid. Mm-hmm. Her cheekbones tell tales of countless workhouse meal times and water thin gruel. Actually, it was peas pudding on most nights. <laughs> I've got some snooping to do. You'd better not leave without saying goodbye. Back to the barmaid. Hello, sir. What can I get for you? I'm investigating the death of Alice Fairchild. I'm glad someone in this city is. Were you working on the night she was killed? I wish I could help, but sadly I was at home on that evening, looking after me portly brother. I'm sorry to hear that. 
I'm just gonna give her a cockney accent. It's no fault of you, sir! <laughs> Been in chatter lately. Any interesting news? Sorry, I tend to be in a world of my own most of the day, so I wouldn't know. Ah, oh, she's not as good as the bartender upstairs. Alright, anyways, we'll move along. Let's see, can we talk to this? I don't want to disturb the mid-jam. I can't have that. The private area. Oh my. Oh my. Oh! God damn, Lula's eyes! That's great. Give us a bit of privacy, would you, darling? Damn, girl. What do you want from me? This will be considerably painless if you let me ask the question. Am I in some kind of trouble? Alice Fairchild. Never heard of her. I hear Milbank the beautiful this I hear Milbank is beautiful this time of year, if they don't send you to the gallows, of course. You're bluffing. What proof do you have? Half the pub saw you leching on her the night she was murdered. What's wrong? Couldn't put up the coin for the night, so you decided to take her by force? J'accuse! It's absurd. I suggest I couldn't afford a common strumpet. To suggest I couldn't afford a common strumpet. My wealth knows no bounds. Alice wasn't common, though, was she, Gibbs? And I think you're overstating your worth. I'd wager that you'd always wanted her, but she was always out of reach for someone of your meager wealth. Oof. Meager! How dare you! I'll have you know that I left with another girl that night. A girl far more costly than that commoner, Alice. You'd better watch that tongue before I rip it out. And which girl is this? It was Beatrice, the girl whose company I was in prior to your intrusion. If that is true, then who did Alice leave with? Why should I tell you? Now correct me if I'm wrong, but you have no further business here. Leave immediately, or I'll have words with the chucker out upstairs. Alright, Mr. Gibbs, but I doubt that alibi will hold for very long. Go to the toilet. Don't need to go. Anything else to see here? Oh, hello, sir. Gentlemen, is the seat taken? Pardon? Mm, he has orange letters. This seat, is it taken? Oh, no, no, it's not. Mm, mm, I'm sorry, am I disturbing you? Not at all, old bean. <laughs> old bean, I've seen far more disturbing things than yourself. Thank you, I guess. <laughs> Old Bean? The name's Hamway, and yours? Hmm. Hmm. Sidney Emerson. Let's be let's be James Bond about it. A pleasure to meet you, Mr. Emerson. Mind if I pick your brains? Be my guest. You seem restless. Pardon me for observing, but you seem rather restless. Restless, indeed I am. What's the matter? I'm rather bored, you see. Oh. Time was that a man could find many a game to occupy an idle hands in this establishment. You mean bar games? Yes, that's it. They used to have all the classics. Nine men's Morris, Skittles, darts, pinball. Pinball? Can't say I've heard of that one. It's a rather exciting game in which you have to land a pin in a ball of yarn. <laughs> Sounds exhilarating. Not a fan of Chev Hey Penny? I would be if I could get my hands on a board. There's one knocking about upstairs. I'm sure the old codger wouldn't notice if you borrowed it. An interesting development. I shall have to get my hands on it. Know anything about the murders? Yes, it's a horrid thought that the beast is still roaming these very streets. Greeting neighbors by day, slaughtering by night, sipping whiskey and conversing in public houses one second, killing the next. I drink gin, just so you know. And I beer. Haha, <laughs> what manner of man would commit these acts? 
That is a question I hope to answer. Ah, you're a philosopher. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I've been called many things in my life, but never a philosopher. No, not this fellow. No. And, I, and spoken with such humility, a philosopher you are. You know any of the victims? I can't say I did, though I know the first three were killed around Shadwell. And the fourth, a stone's throw from here. Killing to think such a thing could happen in this day and age. I've heard similar sentiments expressed. We all act surprised, but in truth we know it is inevitable. This city trades in blood. If it isn't spilled often, we'll all be driven to lunacy. We'll be dashing each other's brains out in the street. Surely you can't think these murders are for the good of the city. Calm down, old bean. It's all merely speculative. Seems my judgment was too hasty. You're not a philosopher. You have the sensitive disposition of a poet. Oh, well, thank you for trying to pinhole me. Ah, uh, goodbye. Farewell, Mr. Emerson. As interesting as this discussion is, time to move on from Hamway. Beatrice, isn't it? It's a pleasure to meet you. If it isn't Mr. Smashy Smash. <laughs> I didn't have you for a bruiser. Looks can be deceiving, madam. <laughs> and so polite, too. What can I do for you, Mr. Sidney Emerson? Ah, the private detective. You found my sister's lost tabby. My reputation precedes me. <laughs> Can I ask you a few questions? Of course you can. I wouldn't want to deny a brute like you. Did you know Alice Fairchild? Of course I did. She was a Frith Street girl like me. It makes me sick to the stomach what happened to her. Were you friends? Alice was a friend to everyone. Not a bad bone in her body. Of course, she could moan with the best of them. Sometimes to blow off steam, but mostly to make us laugh when the spirits were at their lowest. She sounds like a pleasant person. She was. Baked me a plum cake when I was stricken by the pox. Helped me get through it. Oh. You're investigating her murder then, are you? I'm trying my best. Do me a favor, would you, Sydney? Favour. What's that? When you find that murdering bastard, give him a kick in the guts for me. You've got it. It's a deal. Uh, Gibbs claims to be a wealthy man. Is this true? Wealthy? Pull the other one! Haha. <laughs> He's been saving all month to afford me, and I'm no high charger. Hmm. But I don't suppose you went home with him three nights ago. Heavens no, the poor sod went home alone. Albeit after babbling to me and Alice, God rest her soul. He didn't have a penny on him. Though he seems to have scraped together a fair bit in the last few days. Interesting. You sure he went home alone? Sure is sugar. Uh, how do you know Cedric? Said he painted me as Salome, the beautiful Grecian queen. Oh. Sounds rather tame for Cedric. She was grasping the severed head of John the Baptist. <laughs> well, we used a turnip, but you'd never guess from the painting. <laughs> Resourceful as always. When can I find you in the future? If I'm not in here, I'll be at the fifth the Frith Street Bod House, unless I'm in the middle of something. Goodbye. I'm sure we'll meet again soon. Don't be a stranger, Sydney. Alright, so let's go talk to Richie Rich Pants. These tunes are too good. 
I haven't heard a, pl a band play such a varied medley since the Star Wars Cantina. I have no desire to speak to you again. Well, that's a shame, Gibbs, because we've just I just had a word with the lovely Beatrice. It seems that you couldn't even put up the coin for her that night, let alone Alice. It tells me you went home alone with plenty of time to murder Alice. Jacuz! That whore! Aren't I paying her enough to keep her mouth shut? Apparently not. Now I've got a tiny little story for the first Bobby I see. Unless you can help clarify some of the finer points for me. What? What do you want to know? Alice left with a lackey that night. Who is he, ta who is he taking her to? I can't. I promise not to talk. Oh, well, sure you're given. Oh, excuse me. A nice, cozy cot and maybe an affectionate blah 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 cellmate. I think. All right, all right. He was Charlie Finch's man. He was taking her back to Finch's house on Golden Square. He'll have me killed if he knows I blabbed. He paid me twelve shillings to keep my trap shut. A poor investment. Thank you, Mr. Gibbs. That's all I needed to know. You can get back to whatever it is you do. Hmm. Hmm. Please don't tell him I squealed. Oh. Promises. Alright, let's see if we can say farewell to Cedric. Sydney, come and join us for a drink. Sorry, Ced, but I've got a lead to follow. Nonsense, you're not going anywhere without a drink. I was just telling Beatrice about the time you foiled Lord Banchester's insurance case. The devious disguises and ingenious methods you employed. Daddy says you're even better than Hawkshaw, a real master of detection. Well, maybe I'll stay for a swift pint and an ego massage, apparently. That's more like it. Three more, please, Sally, and one for yourself. Alright, time to get blasted. Hours pass. I won't dream tonight. Well, that's good, those dreams are weird. The Alice's funeral. Mm, poor Alice. We will get vengeance! Lazy, lazy vengeance. Chapter 4. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, From henceforth blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Amen. Their labors. Amen. Should you need to discuss our Lord's plan further, I am in the humble service his humble service at the Church of St. Christopher at Finsbury Circus. Right, so we're going to have a reason to visit him eventually. Thank you for coming, Sydney. I appreciate the invitation. Hmm. Very thoughtful. It was a nice service, though I'm surprised by lack of attendance. You seem like a woman with many friends. My husband felt Alice's friends would make an unseemly sight, considering their profession. Ah, oh, what a dick! I see. He would have preferred if neither of us attended. Last word spread that he mourned for a whore. Oh, what an ass. Surely others must know that she was your sister. He has made it quite clear that I'm not to inform anyone of Alice. Right from the moment he began courting me. You obeyed? William is a good man, Sidney. Please don't think ill of him. He only has our best interests in mind. I'm thinking ill. I am ill thinking. I am ill thinking, that guy. I don't like him. Yes, he doesn't know I've hired you to find Alice's killer. 
I don't suppose he'd feel it's a wise use for his money. My money. Please, Sydney, he'd like to meet you. Be sure to visit me at my sister's flat when any new information arrives arises. Yes, so let's meet Douchebag McGee. Hello. You're the private investigator. Sydney Emerson. William Marwood. Hmm. Yes. I imagine you'd have a very Porsche accent. Your retrieval of the necklace provided much relief for my wife, and for this I thank you. I understand you guarantee complete cl client confidentiality. Of course, this is the standard. Good, Mr. Emerson. Mm, yes, indeed. Mm. So if I should find my old Polly's name in the papers, I shall know whom to hold responsible. I am a master of subtlety, Mr. Marwood, a trait which clearly eludes you. Come, Polly. You haven't time for idle chat. Idle chat? Hmm? Yes? Hmm? Hmm? I'm to be in Plymouth. Have a safe journey. You don't fall over and break your stiff neck. Right, so we're in the woods. I believe here we are and there we have it. So that's a good place to break off the episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you've seen, hit that like button down below. Also remember to subscribe for all those lazy general shenanigans. Thank you once again, and until next time, bye-bye. Nice service, though I'm surprised. Cedric did it.